Hey everyone, so you probably saw from the length of today's video that we are in for quite a journey today. The reason is that in this video I'm going to be attempting to tier list almost all of the bosses in Elden Ring. Now, this is going to be again quite something because technically there is a whopping 238, if I remember the number correctly, enemies with health bars in this game. That is an absolutely crazy amount and with that comes the caveat that a lot of the bosses are repeats or reskins or just combinations of two enemies and all of that. So making a tier list for Elden Ring is not the easiest task in the world and honestly I was trying to think of ways to shorten this because I've seen other people do this tier list and it can go anywhere from like an hour and a half to four hours which is absolutely insane depending on how much you delve into each particular enemy. So this is going to be me attempting to sort of streamline the process because again, there are a lot of bosses in this game, but there are a lot of repeats, a lot of samey enemies and a lot of things which are just trash and just a regular enemy with a health bar. So this is the list. This is the one I'm using. How this is going to go is basically I'm going to be grouping bosses together. So as an example, let's look at Borealis of the Fog. Borealis of the Freezing Fog is a typical dragon enemy. Uh, all of the other dragons, Exekis, Agheel, Grail, I think that's one, I don't even remember their names, the two magic dragons, they're all absolutely the same. So when I talk about Borealis of the Freezing Fog, I'm basically talking about all the other ones because there are only marginal differences. So I will be sort of skipping any longer explanation with the other bosses or the other dragons because essentially 99% of the comments I make for this one apply to the other ones. And that's how I'm going to be tackling things. And hopefully that will streamline the process. The large majority of the conversation is going to be around the sort of main bosses, you know. I think the ones that say great enemy felled when you kill them, that those are the ones. And a lot of these like minor bosses I'm going to be skipping over. Anyways, here's the ranking. Uh, S to D are like the actual rankings. And then we have trash boss as the final tier, which is just what it says on the tin, it's a trash boss. This is following my naming convention of the previous video I've done, which is for the other Soulsborne titles, uh, all of the bosses there, which I will link somewhere, you can check that out as well. Anyways, let's get going in here, talking about the first of the categories. These are enemies which are just normal enemies that have been given health bars. Now, there's a wide range of fights within the game that fall into this category. The first two, the Battle Mage and the Beast of Faramazula, both fall into this category. These are just standard enemies that appear later in the game, uh, which have been given a bit more HP and health bar. Now, just as a philosophy, I've never been a fan of just reusing enemies, no matter which way it goes, whether you just put bosses as regular enemies or vice versa. Really, uh, these type of bosses struggle to get anything higher than a C in my view, because they always tend to be the most boring because you have to make them work as regular enemies as well. And Battle Mage, Hughes, yeah, C. The Beast of Faramazula is a D. Uh, it's just, this is just a regular enemy. Uh, nothing much to say about it. Uh, Cemetery Shade, this one appears multiple times as well. Uh, honestly, D, this is just a really one note fight. Same with the Clean Rotten Knight, this is just a Melania enemy, appears in the Halic Tree, totally boring. Just they added poison into the arena, and that's about it. All right, Bell Bearing Hunter. I actually like the Bell Bearing Hunter. And this is Elmer of the Briar as well. This is the same enemy. Uh, like I like the mechanic of him floating his sword. Uh, it really reminds me of Egg's death from like the city of Final Fantasy. He does the same thing. I say this is a solid B tier fight. Uh, the Bell Bearing Hunter has a version in Kaled, which is absolutely insane. So overtuned. But the fight itself is fairly fun. I'm uh, just a standard knight enemy. The only sort of uniqueness to it is that he can hit you from like a little bit more range. That's about it. This is an okay fight in my book. All right. 
as talked about, let's discuss the dragon enemies. Now, outside of a couple of examples, the sort of special dragons like Plesudasex and Fortisex, which we'll talk about later, I tend to quite dislike the dragon fights in Elden Ring. I've talked about this before. I feel like dragon fights were always special encounters in From titles and Elden Ring totally abandons that notion. Uh, every single one of the dragons is just the same moveset, the same attacks, just a reskin. Just, it's just different elements. And I kind of feel like this is taking, again, a really special type of encounter, which is a dragon fight, supposed to be really epic, and really just relegating this to a field boss uh, honestly feels kind of cheap. None of the dragon fights the standard field dragon fights are too interesting in my book. They are very slow. At the same time, the breath attacks hitbox is really sort of inconsistent and difficult to tell where it ends, especially true with exekis. And the dragons really have uh, like trouble sometimes. They get caught on the environment and all that. And I'm just not a huge fan, especially adding on to the fact that the dragons are also reused as standard enemies. Uh, around Grail's Barrow or Grail's, I get confused with the names. Yeah, not a huge fan of any of these and they are pretty much all going into the C category. I will see these when I sort of encounter them. Uh, there's Ag Heal and I think I've looked through this tier list before and I gotta mention this that even with this tier list, there are some bosses missing. Um, I don't know if there is a single list on the internet which actually contains every single one of the Elden Ring bosses. That's how many there are. For example, I think the Ag Heal clone um, that you fight on the bridge, I think that's Grail. That one is missing from this list as far as I can tell. Uh, there's also this weird necromancer guy I found in one of the catacombs. It's just the dude. And I think he's missing from this list as well. Anyways, whatever. Let's go on. Commander Nile. Commander Nile is the one you find on the mountaintops. This fight suffers from mountaintop syndrome uh, in that it's really overtuned. Uh, a lot of the bosses on the mountaintop suffer from this, that FromSoft just felt the need to crank up just the damage, you know. And this guy is just Commander O'Neill, which is not a bad boss. Uh, but Commander Nile is just the same thing, except he summons more difficult adds. And they felt the need to make all of his attacks deal like 80% of your HP. Uh, n I am not like against this fight. Again, you'll see I kind of like Commander O'Neill, but Commander Niall, not a huge fan. I feel it's totally unnecessary to have an already challenging fight and give, again, frankly bullshit add-ons uh, to the fight and tune his damage up so much. I think this fight is up there with some of the hardest if you want to be this solo. Um, it's just really difficult. You This one pretty much feels like the game is forcing you to summon. And this one absolutely is going into the C category. The Black Blade Kindred, again, this is a gargoyle. This is just a reskin gargoyle. And the gargoyles show up a ton of times in the game anyways. And the Black Blade Kindred is just an overtuned version of the Gargoyle, nothing more to their moveset and all that. I don't find either of the Black Blades you fight uh, really that special. Uh, they're just super boring in my view, and they're going into the C category as well. The Black Knife Assassin, nothing special, but this fight is not offensive either. I do like their moveset, uh, so honestly, C category. The Bloodhound Knights, this one is another one of those bosses that shows up both as a regular enemy and it shows up several times as uh, well. This guy, again, not interesting in the slide list. This is just a regular enemy and he's going into the D category. Same with Bulls, Carrion Knight. This is just one of the magic giants, really boring. Now, Commander O'Neill. Like I said, I like Commander O'Neill a lot more than I like Commander Niall. I think the ads he summons are a lot fairer. And with his moveset and the adds combined, this actually makes for, as well as the arena, I have to mention, that you can use your horse and you have quite a bit of room to maneuver. All of that combined make this fight a lot more interesting and a lot more fun. I actually like this fight quite a lot. As far as bosses go that summon other shit to fight you, 
you can't really get much better than this. They always tend to be really annoying, these types of fights, like Elana of the Squalid Queen. Super fucking annoying. And Commander Nile actually manages to have that mechanic and be fun. Honestly, I think this one, he can go into our A, our A category. Uh, yeah, I do like, I do like this guy. Crucible Knights. Oh man, I could rant about the Crucible Knights all day. I could make a separate fucking video on these guys. I really, really dislike the Crucible Knights. Um, I think they represent some of the worst sort of bad gameplay designs that Elden Ring sometimes sticks to in their bosses. Uh, this guy being um, essentially unlimited poise, that's the thing. Um, input reading. I mean, it's pretty much almost impossible to heal against the Crucible Knight. A bunch of like bullshit delay attacks and uh, hitboxes, like really unclear hitboxes. Yeah, I am not a fan of the Crucible Knights at all. Design-wise, they look cool, but I just think this philosophy of, of them basically having just the reactivity, just the reactivity that you know that the game is like super reading your inputs when you're trying to heal or do anything and he's immediately gonna react in an instant, run in and hit you with an attack. Again, to me, this is some of the worst sort of design aspects of Elden Ring. Still, I still don't think this is a trash boss, um, but I am going to put the Crucible Knight into the D tier. Crystallians, also D. Really, really one note. There's nothing much to say about these guys. You just break their armor. They're kind of like the Ruin Sentinels. That's the closest analogy, I think except even less fun than the Ruined Sentinels, and the Ruined Sentinels already weren't a good fight before. I'm noticing, by the way, um, this list is really front-loaded with the shit. Uh, there's a lot of the like boring and bad bosses are, are ending up in the front, so don't get me wrong, I just, I don't like hate every fight in this game, it's just, this is what happens to be up front, so I just gotta rate it as is. The Demi-Human Queens, same thing, they show up in like a million fucking places, there's nothing interesting about them. It's a very basic monster enemy with a few easy attacks and a little bit of spell casting. And pretty much the exact same thing as with the Dami Human Chief. Divine Bridge Golem, I don't even remember this one, but this is a golem. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, this is good as an enemy, but as a boss. Is there even a boss with an HP bar that's a golem? I think there must be. I don't remember fighting it. I gotta mention this, like, I, I can't remember every single one of the bosses. Um, so, yeah, you know how it is. Anyways, D tier for sure. The golems, again, are fine as regular enemies. Next up, this is the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella. I like this fight. I'm gonna be honest with you, I like this fight quite a lot. This is easily going into the A category. I guess if you're putting this as a dragon fight, which technically it isn't, um, there are, again, there are good dragon fights in this game, but this this thing is just a, a fun enemy. Uh, he First of all, his design is really cool. Um, I do like this mummified look. And he's a more interesting version. There are other Dragonkin soldiers um, out in the overworld. This is a more interesting version because it uses that frozen lightning, which just adds that little bit of extra challenge uh, to make the fight a little bit more dynamic in, in phase two. Plus again, I like the design and this one has one of the coolest arenas in the entire game. Yeah, this is just a very, very solid, fun Elder Ring fight. Perfect balance of difficulty. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it's a good fight. Earth Tree Avatar. Now, I don't know if this is going to be controversial or not, but Earth Tree Avatar is going to be our first trash boss. I absolutely hate the Earth Tree Avatar because of how overused it is in this game. I don't know why FromSoft felt the need to have essentially an Asylum Demon, because the Earth Tree Avatar is a reskinned or reused Asylum Demon and sprinkle it in like 20 different places throughout the entire game. There is no better example, maybe with the exception of our next entry, of a boss fight wearing out its welcome than an Earth Tree Avatar. The first time you fight it, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, cool, it's an Asylum Demon, they put one in this game. And then you fight it a second time, a third time, and then one shows up in the capital, and then the rot versions show up in Caled, and you're like, 
oh, come on, how many more of these things are there going to be? And then the final one shows up on the mountaintop and it arbitrarily out of nowhere splits into two and this is a duo fight. I was just like completely over the idea of, a, of an Earth tree avatar at this point. And each of them gets like more overtuned than the other one, even though the moveset generally of the boss isn't too difficult. The one that splits is just absolutely horrible and it really pushes uh, this boss over into the trash boss tier. This is, again, this is a perfect example of a place where some restraint would have been good. Uh, you don't need to sprinkle a single boss into like a million different fucking places, especially since that fight is not that special to begin with in the first place. And pretty much the same can be applied to the Earth Tree Burial Watchdog. Uh, the Earth Tree Burial Watchdog, I think, is only saved by the fact that I think this is at least a unique fight. It goes into the D tier, but by a very, very small margin. I mean, I like the design again, and the, generally the moveset of the Earth Tree Burial Watchdog is interesting. I just wish this didn't wear out its welcome as much as it does. There are like 50 fucking Earth Tree Watchdogs it feels like you fight throughout this entire game. Sometimes they even show up as regular enemies. And again, some restraint would have been nice here uh, because this is how you take a cool design concept and absolutely run it into the ground. Edgar, Priest of Blood. I think this is just like one of those like rapier wielding um, humanoid enemies. Just see. I mean, he does bleed. That's about it. Nothing interesting at all. Falling Star Beast. The Falling Star Beast, in my opinion, is also a C tier boss. Um, the design is good, at least. And I do like the mechanic of you hitting the face or the ass. I think those are the two weak spots. I always like uh, when FromSoft puts in like specific weak spots into bosses. I sort of really like that mechanic and idea of you potentially exposing yourself to more risk by staying in front of the boss or in its face, but you get rewarded by more damage. I always like that mechanic when they add it. However, the Falling Star Beast is again used in a couple of places and some of the arenas from puts it in are absolutely god awful. Uh, there's one in one of those tiny cir circular rooms in one of the dungeons and there it becomes horrible. This thing works well as a field boss. But man, does it not work well as a fucking uh, tiny arena boss. And I think that's a another design thing where Elder Ring sort of suffers, where they take completely functional, good field bosses and decide to cram them into tiny arenas. And there it just doesn't work. Anyways, Fell Twins. Yeah, those are just two omens. Uh, nothing special at all. Uh, this is the tr standard Dragonkin soldier, not the one of Noxtella. Barely gets a C. It's just a less interesting version of a good fight. Um, yeah. Dragonlord Placidus Axe. Dragonlord Placidus Axe is quite a good boss. In fact, it's a very good boss. Um, not S tier. I mean, this fight is a spectacle. And sometimes I feel like the spectacle was put in front of making an actual... Uh, fun boss because it does have very flashy moves that are a little bit bullshit to avoid mainly the breath attack however all that said this is still one of the most epic bosses in the entire game i love the introduction uh i love how you get to him though i do wish there was a closer bonfire and yeah the f the fight itself is really epic and i think this is an appropriate dragon fight if you're gonna make dragon fight from and put them into your game, it should be modeled on this. A dragon fight should feel absolutely epic, and this one does. Plus, I think this is an Elden Ring endgame type boss that manages to balance out difficulty fairly well. Again, aside from that few, like not even few, just one BS attack it has. Yeah, Placidus X, epic, epic boss fight, a fair challenge. And yeah, just a really good one. I like this thing. Oh yeah, by the way, I didn't mention this is not ordered in any way. Uh, I don't like really like ordering tier lists as well. So if it's A, it's A. If it's D, it's D. There's nothing more to it. Elden Beast. Man, man, do I have a lot to say about Elden Beast. I'm going to be honest with you. Elden Beast is straight up going into the D tier. Uh, it's not getting trash boss because there's actually some effort put into Elden Beast. 
But man, do I think as far as from final bosses go, Elden Ring is down there at the bottom. I really, really dislike the, again, the design philosophy behind this fight. There have been, listen, there have been two tier or two phase final bosses in FromSoft games before. However, never has there been an incredibly difficult tanky fight, i.e. Radagon, followed by an even more difficult tanky fight. The, and by even more difficult, I'm purely talking about bullshit. Elden Ring is 100% designed in a way to catch you off guard and kill you. Know that you're drained by this point of resources, of Estus, of your, like, not patience, but sort of your concentration ability, because Radagon is a good fight and he is a challenging fight. And yeah, throw in a dragon, a random dragon, with like 25,000 HP or something ridiculous like that, that's also really tanky, that floats around the arena and runs away from you from 70% of the fight, that also has insane ranged attacks, very high damaging attacks, and some absolutely BS moves like the Elden Stars, which are 100% gonna get you in your first few attempts. Like, again, I feel like the entire 100% design philosophy behind Elden Ring was getting a couple of cheap deaths and force the player to fight the whole thing all over again. First, second of all, this thing is not interesting at all visually. I feel like Elden Beast really sort of clashes with the rest of the aesthetics of the game. Um, and yeah, I absolutely hate this fight. I 100% subscribe to the theory that you were meant to have Torrent in this fight and they just never added it and now they're too embarrassed to patch it in because this like 100% feels like a fight where Torrent would be really like a helpful addition and it's just not there and you're just running across this endless water arena chasing down this Elden Beast while it runs away from you and throws insanely delayed and high damaging blasts of energy at you it's this is again down there with some of the worst final bosses in from especially after dark souls 3 and sekiro both of which happen to have great final bosses uh this really does feel like a huge huge downgrade fierce champions mm, man is this a trash boss if i've ever seen one this is just a group of boring ass npcs that you fight nothing more to it um npc fights are some of the cheapest bosses in uh, like from history uh they are there always seem to be a couple in every single game just make an npc recolor it make it like a blue phantom and just put it in an arena yeah not fun at all marginally better than fucking bloodborne's npc fights but again this is still an npc fight nothing interesting Fire Giant. Fire Giant, I think, is going to be also a D category boss. Very, very closely approaching Trash Boss. I've talked at length about tra uh, Fire Giant as well. I really, again, dislike this boss because of the sort of, how would you say it? Well, it's the camera. I dislike this boss almost purely because of the camera. He is huge. He is way too big. He never needed to be big, this huge. Like, there have been giant enemies in From Games without them being the size of the fucking fire giant. This guy is absolutely huge. His, like, single foot fills up 85% of the screen, and the camera is not up to the task of handling this fight. Because of that, and combined with the amount of damage he does and the amount of HP he has, this boss is like cheap shot, cheap death city. There are so many times, if you're playing melee, I should add, uh, there are so many times where just you're just standing by his foot and you get hit with the fucking plate and you couldn't even see that the attack was coming, couldn't even see that he was winding up. It's absolutely one of the most frustrating fights in the game and uh, some of the most frustrating deaths, I think, in the game can be had from this guy. Especially when you consider that this is a mandatory encounter. There are a lot of sort of other annoying bosses. Again, the dragons have bullshit hitboxes and sort of bad camera as well. But those are skippable. The fire giant is not skippable. And it's just a really messy fight. Again, I feel like if they've reduced this thing's size by like 25% and they zoomed out the camera a little bit like they do in Sekiro with the Demon of Hatred, this would have been an okay encounter. And even the mechanic of you hitting his weak spot would have worked a little bit better. 
but with this it just doesn't and I really 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 dislike this fight. Alright the foreground falling star beast I think this is actually a worse version of the standard falling star beast uh, you know actually you can still go into the C category I don't think it's a D but this is the worst version of these two fights um, it's just this thing with way more HP and a few other bullshit attacks and this thing was already fine and an okay challenge already at least they have an appropriate arena for the full grown uh, I would say both of these bosses are in sort of the same tier yes yeah, Smarag you guys know this is a dragon fight Godfrey oh no this is Godfroy Godfroy is going into the trash tier I will talk about Godric in a little bit, but Godfroy again represents some of the worst things or worst sins I think Elden Ring commits, which is the reuse of major significant story bosses. I think this is one of the worst things Elden Ring does. Uh, there are two or three examples, three examples uh, that I can think of of them doing this. And Godfrey is like horrible example number one. Godric. I'm gonna spoil it, is an S tier boss. I really like Godric. What Godric didn't need is a reskin reuse. And Godfroy is exactly that. The lore behind him doesn't make any sense. There's no reason for him to show up in the Evergel. And yet he does. And I always question, like, why are you reusing this boss? At that point, you might as well have just cut that Evergel out. There's no need for that Evergel. If you can't come up with a boss to put in a dungeon, or put into an Evergel, then don't have that fucking Evergel. Don't just start copy and pasting some of the best bosses and major significant story bosses into Evergels. Godfroy and his other cohorts really, really frustrate me because um, it just sort of hammers home the point I sometimes make that uh, Elden Ring is a little bit too big for its own good. And I think there's no better example of, of that than these three. The other two I will talk about in a bit, but you guys probably know what they are. Um, yeah, I feel like, again, if you can't come up with a boss, just cut that out. Just cut it down a little bit, uh, because man, does this thing feel cheap. Conversely, on the other end of the spectrum, Godric the Grafted is the first S-tier boss, in my view. Godric the Grafted is... Uh, one of the most fantastic sort of early game but significant bosses you could have. Uh, I can't think of any other boss from a From game at sort of this stage, I guess like the quarter of the way through the game, which a bit, little bit less, that's so much fun to fight and is such a great challenge at that point than Godric the Grafted. He comes at the perfect point. You're strong at this point, sort of. You've sort of grasp the basics of the game you're adjusting to the game and at that point this guy represents the perfect challenge i think number one his arena is great number two his design itself is great and just gameplay wise this is a fantastic boss all of his attacks are that perfect balance of dealing just enough damage but also requiring good dodging good mix-ups as well he has a couple of different sort of ways to take his attacks which keep the fight fresh uh the fight actually uses some of the mechanics introduced in Elden Ring such as the jump you can avoid his ground stomp with that and then of course phase two is really cool that intro cutscene to phase two is so badass and I think the fire just adds a little bit more of like spacing for you to mind to avoid the fire but it doesn't actually add so much challenge that the fight would become unfair i think again for where he is in the game if you do fight him uh linearly when you're intending to fight him this is one of the best bosses and this is a fantastic design all around and yeah really really great boss i like godric the grafted and joining him in s tier is going to be godfrey the first elden lord and joining him in S tier is going to be also Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. I've always had a soft spot for this fight. I think out of all of the late game Elden Ring bosses, you can't really get better than Godfrey. Uh, Godfrey is extremely fun. And I think 
One of the things that the late game Elden Ring bosses fall into is that they tend to be very overtuned. It felt like Franza was just like throwing everything at the wall, just give them everything. Magic, jumping around, evasion, range, insane attacks, health drain, everything. And Godfrey has a lot of those things. He hits hard, he hits very hard, but he also manages to be incredibly fair. I think this is the pinnacle of late game boss design. Sure, he has a lot of HP, sure he deals a lot of damage, but every single thing he does is fair. Every single thing is avoidable, everything is telegraphed. And I think there's basically nothing with this boss where if you get hit, it isn't your fault. And I think that's one of the great things about him. Some of these other late game bosses, <coughs> Godskin Duo, you feel like sometimes you're put in a situation where you cannot avoid damage. It's going to be impossible for you. And there are a lot of bullshit deaths that happen with the other late game bosses. That doesn't happen with Godfrey. And I think other than that, not even mentioning the fact of how significant this guy is story-wise, I really like just the intro cutscene of you seeing his remembrance, not remembrance, what it, Grace Guidance, that's pointing towards you. It really does feel like he is what you are going to be once you become Elden Lord. And I think thematically he's fantastic. And yeah, gameplay-wise as well. I really, really like this boss. GG's from soft for this guy. <sighs> Godskin Duo. I switched him with the Apostle, but we might as well get this out of the way. The Godskin Duo, in my view, is absolutely a trash boss. This is, again, sort of similar to what they did with Godfroy. Uh, it's take two good bosses, take two good, very, take two very good bosses, the Apostle and the Noble, and combine them into something that's infinitely worse than both of them. This is the sort of supposed Ornstein and Smo of this game, but the Godskin duo does not work at all because there is zero synergy or zero attempts to have synergy with the moveset of these two enemies. They just copy and pasted these two guys into one arena and they were like, yeah, go for it. The only issue is both of these bosses are designed separately to provide their own challenge. And because of that, when you put them together, it's bullshit city. Like I said, never have I felt like there was a fight in a FromSoft game where sometimes it was so impossible to avoid damage. There are really situations, if you fight them without sleeping pots and all the other bullshit I mean, there are really a lot of situations where it just absolutely feels like you have no chance to avoid damage. Unlike with even the worst aspects of Ornstein and Smo, when they're like really in tune, when they're really synergized and you're getting pelted with attacks left and right, it still feels like if you're good enough at dodging, you will avoid damage. That doesn't feel like it's the case with the Godskin duo. Like when the fat one starts rolling around and he's like flying over the pillars and he's like making U-turns like a fucking, I don't know, rally driver. And the other one is, I don't know, doing the spinning attack or something. I'm just like, what the fuck? Not to mention that these guys, each of their attacks does like easily 50-60% of your HP if you're not well prepared or not well armored. Yeah, this is just one of the worst and I can't believe this is a mandatory encounter. If there is ever a fight where you're meant to cheese things, this is the one. Get those sleeping pots, get those sleeping arrows, get the best bleed weapon you can find and cheese these guys. Please, please cheese them because, man, this is terrible. Conversely, the Godskin Apostle, I think, is a very good fight. He, again, him and the Noble are good on their own, together. Together is where they are a problem. The Apostle itself is a good little humanoid enemy, um, basically having all the harm hallmarks of a humanoid enemy um, in a Souls game. He's not a knight, you know, he's not armored and doesn't have a shield, but you know, he does his little attacks, good mix of like range stuff and up close. And I feel like the second phase where he goes noodly just adds enough challenge uh, and sort of spiciness to keep it interesting. What can I say other than that this is a good little fight? Um, I enjoy fighting the Apostle and yeah, no problems with that. The Noble is honestly going to be just only slightly worse than the Apostle. Again, this is a humanoid enemy, Rapier Wielder. There are only a couple of things that knock the Noble down. Uh, two things basically. 
One of them is his like belly flop attack in phase two, which essentially has, as far as I can tell, almost unreactable startup. Um, I've never once managed to avoid that attack. Uh, there's basically no telegraphing to it. And he just does it and you get hit and then you're like, fucked, you took some damage. It doesn't deal a lot of damage to be fair, but I still don't understand how the hell you're supposed to react to that. The other thing that makes this thing shitty is the belly flop, the aforementioned, not belly flop, the roll attack, I should say. The roll attack is crazy. Uh, it's, you know, when, like, you, you remember how Demon Souls and Dark Souls had quite a lot of like janky attacks where you were like, what the fuck is this enemy doing? Bone wheels come to mind, uh, but some bosses as well. The Godskin Noble's role feels straight out of that era. This is a really jank attack. It looks stupid, first of all. And the mechanics to it, it's just like, he's just like rolling around like an idiot, like a Beyblade. And he goes over obstacles, but only sometimes. Sometimes you like get him stopped or stuck on a pillar. Sometimes he just like goes around you and he's really fast and it's just super jank. Um, and I can't believe this attack hasn't been patched a little bit because it's whack as fuck currently. Um, and just because of that, the Noble gets knocked down a little bit. Grafted Scion, good design, but very, very generic. Uh, D tier. Grave Warden Duelist, D tier. This is just a dude swinging a hammer. Kindred of Rot, fucking awful. Uh, this is a trash boss. This is an enemy as a boss, but not even an interesting enemy. The Kindred of Rot, or even like the the pest versions, the standard enemy versions are bullshit in my view as well. The Leonine Misbegotten, I actually think this is not a bad fight. Uh, the Leonine Misbegotten itself, if you fight it early and you don't just like come here when you're super OP and trash it, it's a solid B tier fight. Uh, he's a monster, but he wields a great sword and has a good combination of those attacks. This always reminded me of a Bloodborne fight for some reason, maybe because it takes place on a beach and I'm just reminded of Orphan of Cause. This is no Orphan of Cause for sure though, but even still, this is as an early game boss and a boss to get a pretty good reward, the sword. This is pretty good, yeah, no issues with the Leonine Misbegotten, fun fight. Lich Dragon 40 sacks. Again, as far as dragons go, this is a huge improvement over the ones that are here. Uh, I would put it in cautiously in the A tier. The only reason I say cautiously is because of that lightning attack that constantly rains down on you. That's a little bit bullshit, but other than that, I do think this is an epic fight. He isn't as difficult as he would appear when you first fight him. He, when you first fight him, this thing looks really impossible, but uh, he, his moveset is actually pretty easy to pick up and he doesn't have anything that's too majorly bullshit. The only shame about this dragon fight and Lanzi X as well is that they do reuse these things in Faramazula, although Lich Dragon 40 sex still has some unique attacks. And yeah, uh, what can I say? This is a good dragon fight. Not as good, nowhere near as good as Pursuit Axe, but also not as bad that it would knock it down to the B tier. Um, just design. Actually, I'm so, I'm so unsure. Because then again, if you consider that this is in the same tier, no, nah, no, nah, you know what? I have to knock down, down Lich Dragon because just when I think about how much I enjoy these bosses versus how much I enjoy this guy, this is not unfun or frustrating or anything like that, but I also don't enjoy fighting Lich Dragon as much as I enjoy fighting the bosses here. Yeah, B tier, but still very good. I mean, again, pretty much anything above C is good, and even C is like, eh, whatever. I don't hate C tier bosses, that's the thing I'm trying to say. Lion Guardian, what the fuck is this? This is just normal enemy, D tier. G at least it's interesting, but again, shows up in a million places. Loretta, actually I think Loretta is a very good fight. I think Loretta can easily go into the S tier. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't feel bad at putting Loretta into the S tier. I think this is an excellent fight. The reason this fight is excellent is because, again, it's sort of that Godfrey syndrome that this is a good knight enemy and just represents the perfect variety without any bullshit that you need for a challenging late game boss. I mean, Loretta is not easy. She has a lot of attacks, she has a lot of HP, but all of her moveset is very easily learnable and 
very intuitive in like dodging, if you know what I mean. Like when you get caught by an attack, it always feels like you're the one making a mistake, not that you're getting caught out by some huge ass combo from like some bullshit attack. And yeah, just because of that, Loretta is excellent. I think thematically and design wise, she is very good as well. And yeah, I can't really complain about this one. Loretta is good. She has a ghost version, which is a little bit shittier, but only because the ghost version has a few less attacks and all that. But yeah, the full actual Loretta fight, I really, really enjoy. Matt Pumpkins, you know where this is going. <laughs> the Mimic tier. You know what? I can give the Mimic tier a C tier because if you don't like bullshit this by like getting naked, uh, it actually can be a fun little fight to fight your own build. You don't really get to do because um, you, you won't meet an invader with the same build. And yeah, if you keep this interesting, it can be pretty fun. I mean, of course, it cheats by having infinite FP and all that, but whatever. Yeah, Mimic Tear is fun. I enjoy that. Fucking Miranda. This is the flower thing. Yeah, boring. Here we go. Mog the Omen. This is the Mog clone. This is a trash boss. This is a through and through trash boss. I actually really enjoy Moog, Lord of Blood. I really do not enjoy the clone of him. It's the exact same thing as Godfroy. Take a great boss, a very interesting, unique boss fight, take some moves out of him, put him in a place where he doesn't belong. They give some bullshit lore reason, but it doesn't make any sense. And yeah, you just have a, like a cheaper, less interesting version of an excellent boss fight. Moog the Omen is exactly that. Why does there need to be two Moogs? Why can't you just keep these bosses unique? These are unique bosses for a reason. It's so painful. Plus, of course, again, this one pretty much doesn't have uh, some of the moves that he, this one does. It's just, man, why, why, why is this in the game? This, does, this didn't need to be in the game. Ah. Uh, yeah, trash, trash. On the other hand, Moog, I think, is a very solid A-tier boss. I really, uh, people complain about Moog because of the blood and all that, but I think he's like a good analogy for like uh, Lady Maria type, you know, those bosses that have like attacks which leave trails. I mean, blood and fire, that's pretty much from soft standard at this point. I think Moog is, is fairly interesting in that regard. The only thing that knocks him down from the S tier is his Nihil attack, which he does, which, okay, it heals him and all that, but the issue is that the game doesn't really give you any hints on what to do, that you need to get those uh, crystalline tears uh, which protect you. It's very difficult to think of that. Plus, I never like when there's just one solution to a problem, I mean, this attack, the knee heal thing, should be avoidable with a perfect dodge, but it's not. And sure, you can heal through it, but it still feels a little bit iffy. I mean, if you don't have the crystal tier, the game is pretty much taking three or four Estus flasks from you for free and making the second phase even harder. And again, I'm not a fan of uh, just having one solution to a particular problem. Um, other than that, the Moog fight is excellent. Again, good delays. I think a fair move set, even with phase two. Uh, there's nothing where you can't like avoid his attacks with good spacing because he has a huge arena and there's plenty of like space to navigate. And yeah, if you fought like Lady, Lady Maria and all that, you know how to fight this guy and you should be fine. This is the magma worm. I don't know if this is the named magma worm or the not named magma worm because there's a couple of these guys <laughs> in the game, but uh, I'm gonna cautiously, this is the supposed to be the named one, right? Well, I can just rearrange it when we get there, but if we're talking magma worms overall, they get a C tier. I think, again, this is one of those bosses that's overused. Uh, there's like four or five of these things. And the one that's on the sort of ascent to Altus Plateau should have been the only one. Maybe put an extra one in uh, Gelmir, but yeah, super overused. And some of the arenas you find the magma worms in are bullshit. They're absolutely tiny for how huge this boss is and how much like lava and other shit he spews. Um, it's really bad. That knocks it down. Uh, overall, the fight is knocked down to a C tier, but the fight itself in a proper arena or in, out on the field is good. 
uh, then it would be a B tier. But uh, yeah, his other sort of encounters knock them down a little bit, uh, which is unfortunate. <sighs> Here it is. Melania, Blade of Mikula. This would be an excellent boss fight, like right up here somewhere. It would be an excellent boss fight if we were playing Sekiro. But we are not playing Sekiro, are we? We are playing fucking Elden Ring. And with that, Melania is going into the D tier. I do not like this boss fight. You guys probably know I don't like this boss fight. It's not a trash boss because there's a lot of effort put into this fight, but... I think Melania, again, represents some of the worst, like, unbound, unrestrained that FromSoft had when designing bosses. This, like, boss feels like the absolute case of, let's make something difficult, not to make the fight actually fun, but specifically to frustrate the players. Specifically, this boss is designed to be incredibly annoying, and again, I 100% subscribe to the idea that Melania is a cut Sekiro boss. And if she was in Sekiro, she would be excellent, like I said. If you look at all of her movesets, they synergize perfectly to Sekiro's gameplay. You have the Mikiri counters, the flurries which could be blocked, uh, her like waterfowl dance and jump attacks and all that, which could be avoided with Sekiro's faster movement. But that's not the case. She's in Elden Ring and she doesn't work in Elden Ring. And I think it's exactly the same issue that Sister Freed had, where she felt like a random Bloodborne boss put into Dark Souls 3. Melania feels like a Sekiro boss put into Elden Ring. And again, all of the mechanics are good separately, but there's just that little bit of extra 10% bullshit maybe she's too fast maybe she's a bit too aggressive and all that which combines to make this boss just not fun i don't find this boss to be fun and i don't find the challenge she provides to be fun whereas a challenge like godfrey is fun her challenge is not fun it's designed specifically to be annoying as hell and yeah it's unfortunate because again there's so much effort put into her but yeah no thanks Alright, who do we have next? We have Malekith, the Black Blade. Malekith is going to be joining Melania in the D tier. I also am not a fan of this boss. Uh, the reason I'm not a fan of this boss is, again, he has that aspect where he has some attacks where there is one very specific questline item to deal with them. At least with Malekith, there is an option to actually dodge what he's doing. The reason I'm not a huge fan of Malekith is, again, this sort of extra 10% overtuning, which for some reason FromSoft felt the need to put into a lot of their late game bosses. Uh, Malekith is incredibly aggressive. The first phase, Beastman Gorank, I swear, again, has some of those attacks which are nearly unreactable. The fucking, the rock sling shotgun type attack he does. Uh, it comes out so fast, it has such an insanely high startup that 90% of the time you're not going to be avoiding it. Okay, you get through that, that phase is not egregious, but you get to phase 2. First of all, he barely lands. Uh, there are so many, like, huge stretches of gameplay where he's just flipping around, doing ranged attacks, and you just can't even hit him because he's so fast. Other times, he just has insane combos, um, fairly unclear hitboxes, and of course he has that stupid health drain on all of his attacks. Again, I feel like there is a good boss fight underneath. I would rather take Malekith with a little less aggression and maybe not having the health drain, but have him have more HP. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of HP and poise, but I think if he had he would be a much more interesting fight if you tune down all of those little extra bits. Again, this fight feels like a prime fight you need to cheese. I mean, summon summon your strongest summon and destroy him because otherwise you're just going to be frustrated with this thing. All right, Margit the Fellowman. I do not mind Margit. I think he's a B tier. Uh, he has some Elden Ringish attacks. Like there's that one where he like has his uh, weapon out over you that like the startup or the wind up is like 10 seconds long 
uh, and it's just super unrealistic and a lot of the shit he does sometimes again falls into that thing where he has combos but you never know where the combo is going initially and you're dodging and dodging and you're like okay he's done now I can counter attack and he just does two more attacks randomly and that's something a lot of Elden Ring enemies do but at least this is an early boss fight he doesn't sort of I mean if you do other stuff and you level up a little bit he's not going to really be a challenge um, if you go to him straight up he is going to be difficult but yeah it's just that thing if he didn't have those like random combo extensions which just feel like they are designed to drain your HP he would be a really good fight because again he has the hallmarks of a good boss and the moveset which is designed to challenge a new player it's just again there's a little bit of extra there which I don't think is necessary and pretty much the same with Morgoth uh, Morgoth I used to really like this fight I still like it design wise and lore wise but I fought him again and now he's a little bit diminished in my view the main reason being that he is again this just overtuned um, he has sometimes almost infinite combos it feels like he just doesn't stop and that's what makes this really really annoying all right knight's cavalry uh no it's just ring wraiths uh generic knight enemy nox duo straight out of bloodborne uh just a boring version uh if i wanted to fight the cemetery not cemetery shades what are they called in bloodborne you know the the ring rates in bloodborne I would just play Bloodborne. Um, Omen Killer, this is a Capra Demon. Uh, good as a reference, but it's just a little bit overtuned Capra Demon. Patches is just Patches. Uh, fuck Patches. All my homies hate Patches. He's going into a trash boss tier. Onyx Lord, again, shows up as an enemy in a million fucking places. Um, well, actually, not a million, but he does show up in a couple of places. Boring. Uh, he has some gravity attacks, but everything is so easy to avoid. This is just a perfumer. Um, it's shit. We don't want to see perfumers on the best of days because they're annoying, like straight up. And this one just has a boss HP bar. Uh, putrid tree spirit. Fuck. I hate the putrid tree spirit. I need to talk about this thing. Uh, this thing is a cut Dark Souls 3 enemy. Again. It has all the hallmarks of a trash boss. Like the Earth Tree Avatar, it shows up in a million fucking places. Like the Godskin Duo, or even like the Fire Giant and all that, this thing is huge. And the camera really cannot keep up. That's what I'm talking about with the Godskin Duo, the camera. Third of all, just like the Magma Worm, FromSoft felt the need to cram this enemy into like absolutely tiny arenas. Yeah. This thing is just bad. It's bad, bad, bad. It's, again, even as a cut Dark Souls 3 enemy, it would have been bad if it was in Dark Souls 3. Uh, really unclear hitboxes, uh, high damage, bad camera, and just a bad overall time. All right. We have Radagon next. Radagon actually is going into the A tier. Listen, if we just had Radagon as a final boss... S tier. I actually really, really like the Radagon fight. I think he's a good, a very, very solid end game challenge. And man, man, do I wish we just had Radagon as the final boss, maybe with a more extended second phase or like something like that. The only reason I cannot with good conscience put Radagon into S tier is because he's followed by the Elden Beast. Um, again, if it was just his own Great final boss, fantastic, up there with some of the best, but again, FromSoft couldn't contain themselves and felt the need to put in another incredibly spongy, incredibly damaging enemy there. After Radagon, who's already sort of spongy and does a lot of damage, and because of that they've managed to knock down a fantastic final boss, or what would be a fantastic final boss from the top spot down to just A tier still. Very good boss fight, design-wise excellent, good mix of movesets, and yeah, overall fun to fight, it's just the combo, the combo that's the issue. 
All right, I need to get going here, man. This is also gonna be like an hour long. Holy shit. Uh, Red Wolf of Radagon. Uh, this is about as C tier as you can get. Uh, if you're gonna have a Sif reference, please make this a little bit more interesting. Um, it's just a wolf and he does magic. Yeah, whatever. Rykard. I think actually Rykard is probably the pinnacle in the series that a gimmick fight is gonna get. Uh, you know, FromSoft has had a version of this gimmick fight where you take some legendary weapon and you shoot blasts of wind at an enemy who normally would be too difficult, uh, except for Yorm, but whatever. And, you know, out of all of the versions of this fight, Rykard is the pinnacle because he's actually challenging still. And even though you have the super powerful weapon, which does make you feel like an anime hero and does make you sort of... Um, yeah, just had that anime power, I guess. He still manages to be a challenge. Plus, he's really cool. I mean, Gigi's the voice actor of Rykard. Uh, some of the funniest and best voice performance. I do like that he didn't go for the standard thing of making him sound like a snake. Man, this this thing is hilarious. But it's also a good fight, and I do enjoy it. Um, the only thing that knocks it down are against some very unclear and nearly unavoidable attacks, particularly in phase one with the snake when it slams its head into the ground. It's a little bit bullshit, but yeah, again, I feel like this is the pinnacle that the gimmick wind weapon boss fight archetype is gonna get in a FromSoft game. Scale is begotten. <coughs> Trash. Uh, this is just a normal enemy. Gideon off there. Again, he's an NPC fight, and he's just a really, really overtuned NPC. I really don't like this guy. I sort of agree with the mechanic, and I think it's a fun thing that the more of these like hidden bosses you discover, the more extra spells he gets. And he actually happens to get easier because he picks up some of the like, trash spells like Scarlet Aeonia. And uh, again, he actually becomes a little bit easier. But he's just really overtuned. He has that Bloodborne syndrome of NPC fights where it feels like he's an NPC, but he's playing absolutely by different rules than you do. And again, just the speed at which he attacks and all that becomes nearly impossible. But at the same time, summon your pack of wolves or any sort of mob uh, ashes and he absolutely becomes a bitch and he's an absolute chump and you can just pin him down and stun lock him forever. Yeah, not. If you're gonna have a NPC fight, uh, this is not the way to go. Actually, I don't know what's the way to go with NPC fights. They never happen to be fun in any Souls game, so maybe the best NPC fights are the ones that don't exist. Soldier of Godric, best boss in the game, S tier, the most fun, the most challenging. Yeah, Soldier of Godric, S tier. Spirit Caller Snail. <laughs> this mechanic has existed in a lot of the Souls games. Here with this one, yeah, you just you chase him around like in Bloodborne, the the witches or like the Mist Caller in Sekiro. It's really easy. Why is this even a boss? You know, the Regal Ancestor Spirit, and I guess at the same time the normal Ancestor Spirit. I think design-wise, both of these are solid. Um, they're monster fights. I mean, I don't think there's enough difference between the two of them to put them in different tiers, but I guess the regal one would be slightly better. Uh, this one just has a few extra attacks, but I do like them as beast fights, which there are actually a lot of the beast fights in this game as an Elder Ring tend to be like really tanky. They're like these types, like the falling star beast that just like charges at you, more of like the bull type enemy. And these ones are actually like regal and majestic. And the attacks they do reflect that. Plus, you know, there are actually not that many beast fights that do not also have a, a rider and are not a horse. Uh, yeah, I actually enjoy these. Are they anything special? Not really. Uh, but as sort of fun B tier fights go, you can't really get anything better than this. Uh, Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. Again, this is sort of a gimmick fight, but not really. I would put Renala in B tier as well. I think the first phase is a good puzzle, although I do think it's a little bit annoying if you keep dying to her that you have to redo it because once you know what to do and once you have everything down, it's just very easy to breeze through. I mean, uh, yeah, the first phase, 
does have that. Gameplay-wise, she's actually very interesting. I like that she's a spellcaster, one of the few in the game that actually tries to like stay away from you and use magic and all that. Uh, plus, she has like no poison or anything like that, so she does reflect the archetype. Where it gets a little bit annoying is she starts summoning, and unlike uh, the commanders, uh, where is he? Oh, there he is, Commander O'Neill. She has that Elana syndrome where she summons add-ons which make no fucking sense, like when she summons the the dragon. There it gets really annoying. Uh, but overall, still, it's not a bad fight. Again, it really just does remind me of Elana for some reason because of the summoning, but she's more of a caster. Is she terrible? No. Again, summon a pack of dogs or any sort of fast uh, mob spirit ash and she goes down very, very quickly. This is the less interesting version of Loretta uh, C tier. It's still Loretta, has the basic hallmarks, but just a little bit more boring. What can I say? The Royal Revenant. Which one is this? I totally forgot which one this is. I need to look this thing up. Oh, I know what this is. This is that really annoying poison spewing asshole. This is a terrible fight. This is a terrible fight. Um, yeah, just very one note. It teleports away from you. It spews poison. It's just, again, specifically designed to annoy you. Uh, there isn't actually anything like much in the way of interesting challenge behind this thing. Just teleports all over the place and has a huge attack flurry, which basically breaks anything, spoils and your shield and all that. I don't like this thing at all. Rune Bear. It's just a bear. D tier. There's a million of these. All right, Star Scourge Radon. Star Scourge Radon is S tier. Now this is a gimmick fight as well, technically, but it's a gimmick fight where you have the option to tackle him solo. I mean, you can do the same thing with Rykard, but with Rykard, the game very clearly sort of signals to you that you're not supposed to do this. With Rykard, you do actually have the option of um, tackling him solo, and then he's a very challenging fight. When the game first came out, he was really overtuned, and he's been nerfed and then buffed and then nerfed a couple of times, and I think he's in a good place now. He is challenging, and you do need to be sort of mid to high level to take him on, solo especially, but there's nothing that he does that cannot be avoided or comes out of left field. However, the gimmick, I think, is super fun. And thematically, that is how you should be fighting this guy. I mean, it's the whole idea of the festival and you taking on this guy with a group of enemies, or I mean a group of allies. It's really fun. And I think the add-ons help and make the, the fight thematic, but they also don't help enough that they carry you. I mean, they do well and they do deal damage to Radon, but again, it sort of feels like having the knights with you uh, in Dark Souls 2 in the third DLC. Uh, the Burnt Ivory King, it sort of feels like they help, but it's nothing major. And then thematically, it's just a much more interesting fight that way. And yeah, this guy is just cool. His design is good. Again, his moveset, I like his gravity magic and all of the attacks that way. His face too adds more challenge, but again, it doesn't overtune him, which I guess is the thing I like with face two. And yeah, just overall, super fun fight and one of the best spectacle fights. And an actual good version of a gimmick fight. I mean, this is already a good gimmick fight, but this is one of the best gimmick fights, I think, in the series, again, aside from the Burnt Ivory King. Stone Digger Troll, this is, you know where this is going. It's a, just a basic enemy. Uh, Tibia Mariners, again, this is not bad, but it's so overused. There's so many of these things. They're a little bit more interesting than the Earth Tree Avatar, and they are not used as much. That's why they are saved from the trash bust tier, but man, there's a lot of these things again, and it just gets a little bit tiring after a while, especially since none of them are actually any different than the others. Tree Sentinel, this is, I guess it includes the Draconic as well and all that, um, yeah, this is a C tier boss, I would say this is like the re less interesting version of Loretta, um, as an early game boss and all that, an early game challenge, this is good. But the draconic ones are a little bit overtuned sometimes, but they're not that difficult. I mean, they have the really high damaging, but also slow attacks, which is sort of the fair way of designing a boss that deals a lot of damage. Mm. 
C tier, I, I don't even know if there's much I can say about this guy. It's just a big knight on a horse, and he has some attacks. Um, but nothing nothing major, yeah. I guess as far as C tier bosses you go, you can't really get more generic than this guy. Not bad, not bad, but you know. Valiant Gargoyles are an absolute straight up trash boss. This is the duo one. On their own, the Gargoyles are not terrible. I would put them probably, where is Black Blade Kindred? D tier, did I put him? I can't even find him anymore. Whatever. The dual Valiant Gargoyles are absolute trash. The reason they're absolute trash is because they really represent, again, the worst aspects of a duo fight where you have two enemies to deal with where no attempts have been made to synergize their movesets. I mean... Ornstein and Smo have synergized movesets. The Throne Watcher and Defender have synergized movesets. Even the, again, the, the Nazgul in uh, Bloodborne have synergized moveset. So this is just two enemies thrown into the arena. And you have the added annoyance of the poison attack. That poison breath attack is one of the worst things in the game. Like, not only does it stun you, it actively damages you and does poison build up. This is also an attack where it can come out of nowhere. Uh, they can do it almost with zero startup at any time during the fight, and it covers an absolutely massive fucking AoE. And the only reason this is designed this way is for you to take unnecessary damage, but also to make it more difficult for you to maneuver. And there's already two enemies you're dealing with, which can fly in at any time, have a lot of attacks and flurry attacks, have a lot of AoE attacks, and can close the distance very fast. And you have this annoying ass poison that you gotta deal with as well. This is, as far as duo fight goes, duo fights go, I should say, this is one of the worst in the entire game. Absolutely <laughs> trash. Worm face, uh, at least the design is interesting. Uh, he's very not challenging. He has that gimmick where he does instant death build up. Um, yeah, again, the only reason this gets C is because at least again, the design is interesting. Not difficult in the slightest. You can bleed it really easily and all that. And if you have decent death blight sort of defense, he basically cannot do much to you. The only gimmick is again, he can get you with the insta death. Abductor virgins. Um, very, very low D tier. It's just, these things are annoying on their own. Doesn't need to be a boss. Uh, doesn't need to. The fire dude. Uh, yeah, he's boring as well. Just an NPC that does fire spells. Has a lot of poise for some reason and way too much stamina. Yeah. Alabaster Lord. This is just the overtune version of the, the other guy. The Onyx Lord, right? I think so. I don't know if I fought this guy. I'm not sure. I've definitely seen him. Uh, yeah, somewhere along the... It's just a more powerful version of the Onyx Lord, right? If I remember correctly. Aleto, Black Knife Ringleader. Yeah, this is another Black Knife Assassin. Where did I put this one? There's nothing else to say about this one. You get the ashes from this, right? If I remember correctly. Just a Black Knife. I don't mind the Black Knife Assassin fights. So, what can you say? Ancient Heroes are more, I do mind this a little bit more because, again, this is a standard enemy that shows up uh, later on in the mountains, and they're really overtuned on the mountains, super fucking annoying, uh, but the boss one is there, what can I say? <laughs> oh, man. And finally, on the last sort of spot, we have the two Astels, Astel Stars of Darkness and the Natural Born. Astel actually is an A-tier fight in my view. I think as unique boss fights go, this is up there. Uh, he's sort of a dragon, I guess, if you consider him to be a dragon, but he's very unique and he actually feels like a Bloodborne enemy, sort of like fighting an Amygdala, but the more interesting version of the Amygdala, I do like Astel's moveset. And I think he does represent a good challenge in the game and... He's a very, very solid sort of, yeah, fun boss fight. Um, he has a couple of attacks which are, again, their hitbox is a little bit iffy. Not uh, like, but it's difficult to avoid is what I'm trying to say, or it's like, eh. But nothing too egregious, and he's really cool, and he's really cool. 
where he is not really cool is his unnecessary clone. Estelle, Stars of Darkness, is the third example of FromSoft unnecessarily, without any reason, reusing a perfectly serviceable boss fight and just putting it in a dungeon where it's clear they had just like completely run out of ideas on what to put into this dungeon and you're just like, what do we have? What have we not reused? Estelle, put him in there. Uh, and it completely devalues the reason for this fight. Uh, this is supposed to be a special encounter. You're discovering some like eldritch uh, centipede dragon-like monster. And this is like in Bloodborne when you fight a great one. You're connecting with some like eldritch part of the world, like Lovecraftian part. And that makes sense. And it, this is a special encounter. And it's completely devalued by being a clone of this thing. After one of the most frustrating chalice dungeons, not chalice dungeons, see I have Bloodborne on my mind. After one of the most frustrating uh, catacombs in the entire game, you arrive at a fucking clone of Estelle and you're like, why? Why did this need to be in the game? This is such a unique encounter and it is true for all of these bosses which are reused. You take unique encounters and you devalue them. They shouldn't be like this. They, these things do not need clones. And even though these like Godfrey, or I mean Godfrey, Mo, and Astel have the same or very similar movesets to their boss actual good counterparts, it still feels a really cheap like way to add more bosses when they didn't need to be added. And with that, people, we have our finalized tier list. Now, you might say there is a lot of C and D and trash bosses. The only reason is, again, because this game is absolutely overloaded with bosses. If you look at all of the bosses, which are actually sort of main bosses, the ones that have like the great enemy fell, the remembrances and all that, the tier list would be a lot more stacked in the good part. Uh, again, it's just Elden Ring being Elden Ring and having a shit ton of bosses, you are going to have situations where there's a lot of bad things uh, because things are cloned, things are like turned into, feel like enemies are turned into bosses and vice versa. And again, I feel like some of these things didn't need to be bosses, but here we are, 238 bosses overall. This is nowhere near the full list, I think. Grail, I think, is missing for sure. The Necromancer guy, probably there's a lot of other things missing. There are some duos which are missing that I don't see here. Um, yeah, obviously this is not an exhaustive list. If this was, we would be here for like four hours. This is already like an hour and a half long video. So with that, we have come to the end of this marathon. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. If you did stay to the end, congratulations, first of all. I cannot believe it. Um, you are a true fan and I thank you. If you just skip to the end, hello. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give this a like, comment, subscribe as always, turn on post notifications. And yeah, I hope to see all of you guys next time as well. Peace out and goodbye.